Hi, this is Karin Weiss and welcome to the Medicus Mundi Switzerland Health for All podcast. And today we talk with Karin Stierlin. She is the founder of the Taboo Breaker Association and the developer of the app Loveland. Karin Stierlin's Loveland app provides a new framework for teaching young people about sexual health. She's not shy to name the sexual taboos by their names, be it on contraception, menstruation or gender-based violence. Hi Karin, thank you so much for being my guest at the Medicus Mundi Health for All podcast today. Welcome to this episode. Thank you so much, Karin. I'm very happy to be here and to answer your questions. You are a very passionate lady to break taboos around sexuality of young people. At one point in your life, you must have been so frustrated that you decided to dedicate your life to your mission, that is breaking sexual taboos of young people. What exactly happened? So it was indeed uh, very frustrating to start as a sexuality health teacher in, in Switzerland because I had to realize that there was a significant gap in resources. Most of the material was very outdated or it was just available in the shape of books. And as we know, young people are not really, their favorite is not really to read. Then we had like some videotapes from the 80s, including but very like outdated information and there was no interaction and there was just very much theoretical knowledge and no content that was linked to the reality of a young human being discovering life and, of course, sexuality and body and all these topics that are related to sexuality education. There was no open space or no open environment for young people to break all these taboos or to have an open discussion on these delicate and sensitive topics. And what happened next? What made you develop the app Loveland, which became a multi-channel program to make sexual and reproductive health education globally accessible? It all started with Loveland the board game. I was always very convinced, also due to my professional experience, my former professional experience, I was always very convinced of gamified learning that is interactive and breaks taboos in a or, or breaks sensitive topics in a very relaxed manner. So I developed Loveland the board game and I actually just wanted to use it for myself in, in Switzerland for Swiss um, sexuality education sessions. But then I got the chance to test it uh, in Indonesia. And that was a key moment because I realized that sexuality education is independent from a cultural or religious background. These young people had all very similar questions like the young people in Switzerland or Europe. What kind of questions did they have? For example, um, am I beautiful enough? I mean, we had girls in head covers, for example, and I really assumed that they were not really related to their bodies. I mean, that was kind of a prejudice on my side, definitely. And I saw that these girls are uh, very like, also like very concerned about hey, how am I looking? Am I looking good? What is normal? What is not normal? Which is very important for young people to know. Questions about condom use, for example. And you must imagine we had classes of 70 gender mixed young people. Imagine how courageous you must be and how safe you must feel to ask a question in, in that crowd. So I was amazed and I came home to Switzerland. I thought, well, I must make Loveland scalable. But this is definitely not possible with a board game. I mean, you cannot update it. It's a logistic disaster or, or yeah. So we decided to transfer Loveland into a mobile app that is globally accessible for anybody who is interested. So if I understood well, Loveland is a multi-channel program. So what does it exactly mean? So multi-channel means we have multimedias or several medias. We not only have the app, which is great for young people, but also the app is limited regarding content, right? We cannot put all the information into a mobile app, otherwise it's just an animated working sheet. So what we did, we made an extension of the app, which is a website, which includes tutorial videos that are easy, understandable. Um, we have the bios of our characters of Loveland there and, and much more um, relevant information. But we also realized that we need to empower adults like youth workers, teachers, educators. And therefore, we have developed 
train the trainer program that we are currently um, transferring into a digital training program. So we will have tutorial videos, but also a real toolbox with a lot of teaching material that makes teaching sexuality education easy and very interactive. And what is the most innovative part about the Loveland app? I think the most innovative part is that it is a safe, but still appealing learning world. It's, it's an adventure world where you learn about sexuality uh, education in a playful manner without being uh, being uh, like or without having like vulgar content appearing like like on the on on the internet where you never know what you get when you ask a question you have sound information and um as i said it's globally applicable we have everything is audio recorded so even people with low reading skills have the chance to learn the island world like the island concept allows young people to specifically learn because each island is a specific topic of sexuality education. Maybe you have to explain, sorry to interrupt, maybe explain a bit more about the Loveland app, about the islands, because I'm not sure whether everyone knows about the island. So Loveland is an island world, includes several um, islands and each island covers a certain topic of the broad topic field of sexuality education. So for example, we have Right Time Baby Island, which is about contraception. And then we have Bubbly Bubbly Island, which is about intimate hygiene. We have Jungle Lady Island, which is after female, female puberty and so on. The innovation is that young people decide themselves what they want to learn about. So we don't have a 16-year-old teenager that has to go to, t uh, to puberty island first before he or she gets or they get to the contraception island, right? So um, it's very tailor-made and therefore young people are very motivated to use the app. How many years have you been working on this project? Well, <laughs> too long. <laughs> Um, I've been like, I think I have developed Loveland, the board game 2010. And I never thought that it's going to be like such an adventure. I had no clue I would like write such a big story when I created Loveland. And the Loveland app we have started to create in 2019. But of course, we had some interruptions due to COVID that made it very difficult to continue. I would say 2020 was the big start actually or the official start were there times you wanted to quit or give up yes absolutely many times i mean <laughs> it's very hard to find uh, financial resources it's the sexuality education is still a huge taboo for foundations i think it's also quite challenging i mean you it's still it's still very hard to explain people that it's not a sex app it's a sexuality educational app that also includes mental health education right it's not only sexuality education it also includes mental health which is critical especially for um young people in puberty they are most at risk for mental illness and this is the big trick uh, this was very hard for me to um to convince or still is very hard to convince people Sexuality education is a broad topic. I mean, and on which area do you focus most? Or where do you see the pressing needs? The focus is actually not, not specifically on the topics. As you said, it's a very broad um, topic or, or field of topics. All our content is based on the UNESCO sexuality education guidelines, which is which is absolutely fantastic because it's international so we follow an, an evidence-based approach and what what most important for us is is not only the topics but it's also or mainly that we not only transfer knowledge but only foster young people's communication skills and sound decision making including mutual respect and um, consent for example so it's not just the knowledge about everything. It's, it's like that approach that they have the skills to successfully defend themselves and stay healthy by themselves. Karin, today you live in Cape Town, where many young people face the feelings of shame around their sexuality. Plus, it is often combined with cultural taboos. 
for example, they do not name specific body parts or they do not have sex before you get married and so on and so forth. So many teenagers often have no choice but to rely on information from social media or pornography. How does the app Loveland help to bridge the gap of feeling shameful and avoiding talking about sexual taboos or needs? So that's a very important question. And um, I think the big advantage we have with the app, it's sound and appropriate content we have. It's available for free on Android and um, iOS. So far, we have three languages, all audio recorded. That makes it easy to understand. And um, young people can play secretly, I would say. I mean, no one has to know. So they can create a safe space if they want with the app. So what we see a lot is boys grab the iPhone or, or phone and play like quite hidden while girls cluster and play together and have a big discussion around all these topics. So I think as it is a very sensitive topic, we must give them the opportunity to choose themselves in what kind of environments they want to learn about it. And as we can make sure Loveland has no vulgar content or appearing pictures that are inappropriate, It gives them really the trust and also the confidence that they can learn in an easy way. So you observed some differences between the young men and women? When we did some testings or still do testings to also get like feedback, critical feedback um, from, from the main users, the young people, we see that boys often want to learn by themselves while girls rather cluster and, and build a small group around one phone and then smile and giggle and express um, like <laughs> obviously while the boys play alone and afterwards tell us ah oh, you know what I just played Ruby Island which is menstruation island now I know about uh, menstruation and I might be a bit friendlier to my girlfriend that poor thing that has to go through that every month imagine if I had to go to young boys and tell them, listen, we have to talk about menstruation. I think they would not really be that open-minded, to be honest, because it's delicate, it's blood. And if you give them the chance to do it volunteer based without seeing anybody seeing them, I think that's a big advantage and big benefit for them. You like to break taboos. How do parents or religious leaders react to the app Loveland? It's all about trust building. I mean, Loveland, it's a quite a provocative name. And we often have this discussion in our team. Should we rename Loveland because it's about love, which some people automatically um, link with, with sexuality or, or sexual activities? And what we, we, we are planning at the moment is to make like podcasts and tutorial videos to explain to adults what Loveland is. It's not a guide or a manual to becoming sexually active. It's a guide to stay healthy and to make your own decisions that are sound and knowledge based. And if once we get that trust, people are very open minded and they even play it. So we are currently even um, enhancing the app, adapting it so that jumping and navigating becomes easier also for adults. Very interesting. And where can we find the app? So it's for free for everybody because we, that was the key decision we made. It must be available for any person on that world that has access to a smartphone. So it's a free app and you can find it on iOS or uh, Android store. And it's called Loveland. And the icon is the head of a flamingo. And why a flamingo? It's our logo. We thought that pink flamingo is it's it's um it's an international animal somehow. It flies. It gets an overview, right? So it it gets like a, a lot of bird's view or bird's perspective. What are your aspirations for the future? What do you hope for? So we hope that we get enough funding to complete the app. So far, we have uh, 10 topic islands, but only one game level. And as I mentioned before, we want to add um, communication and decision making level. We also want to add more languages to make it even more globally accessible. And we also want to build a chatbot so that young people can ask questions immediately and anytime. 
And this chatbot must be programmed by us so that you do not get any uh, answers or that an inappropriate questions are blocked, that we can keep that safe environment for young people. And of course, it would be amazing if we had like organizations that would join us so we can partner, yeah, distribute the app on a larger level. Thank you so much for this very interesting and inspiring talk and for being my guest at the Medicus Mundi Switzerland Health for All podcast today. I thank you very much um, for all your great questions and for having me. Thank you so much. This was the Medicus Mundi Switzerland Health for All podcast with Gachin Weiss. You can listen to it on Apple Podcasts, Spotify and on our website. To spread the message, please leave a comment on our website, share and like it. So stay tuned and watch out for the next episode.